Bye. Well, earlier I spoke with Jacqueline Murakatete. She is the founder of the Genocide Survivors Foundation, and she's fighting for more than gender equality. She survived Rwanda's genocide in 1994, going on to become an internationally acclaimed human rights activist. And I asked her how it all began. My family and I were hunted uh, day and night uh, simply because of our ethnicity, our ethnicity and where I witnessed men, women and children being murdered uh, indiscriminately uh, simply because of their Tutsi uh, ethnicity. Uh, so the experience was very, very difficult and uh, at the end of it, uh, as you mentioned why I was one of the few people who uh, survived, uh, I would come to learn that neither my parents nor my uh, six siblings, nor most of my aunts, uncles, cousins, friends uh, had survived. How did you get from Rwanda and from that background to now being an internationally acclaimed human rights activist and the founder and president of the Genocide Survivors Foundation here in New York? Yeah, well, after the genocide, I was one of the few lucky genocide orphans in that I had an uncle who then was at the time living in the U.S., so he adopted me and brought me here. And so I came to this country, I learned the language, I went to school, and at some point I felt that as a survivor, as somebody who had survived the genocide, I had responsibility to, to speak for the people, for my family, for my friends, for the people who had been murdered, for people who could no longer uh, speak for themselves. Because I think when you go through that experience, initially you ask, you have a lot of questions. Why me? Why did I survive? And at some point, some of us come to realize that we did survive. We may not necessarily know why we survived, why so many were killed, but as survivors, we do have that responsibility. So beginning at the age of 16, as a high school student, actually, I started sharing my experience uh, initially with my own classmates, uh, traveling, going to high schools, colleges, uh, middle schools, and sharing my experience. And actually my, my initial uh, decision to speak was inspired by a Holocaust survivor who came to my sophomore class when I was in high school, and he shared his story, and then he motivated me to start speaking. So from 2001 uh, to the present, I have been engaged in this work of trying to raise awareness about genocide, about um, human rights, about the importance of speaking out when people are being discriminated against because of uh, who they are. Is that what the mission of your organization is, the Genocide Survivors Foundation? The mission of the organization is twofold. One is to uh, raise awareness about genocide and other forms of mass atrocity crimes uh, by organizing educational programs, going into schools, going to churches, synagogues, communities, and speaking about racism and anti-Semitism. So that's part of the organization. The second part of the mission is actually raising funds so we can do work with uh, survivors uh, in Rwanda and in other countries that have experienced uh, genocide and other forms of uh, mass atrocity crimes. Currently, there are a number of human rights uh, crises or hotspots around the globe. Syria is uh, getting a lot of attention particularly or perhaps because the refugee crisis is having a global impact. What is your take on that? Is your organization involved in that at all? Yes, so we've definitely been working to raise awareness about the current refugee crisis uh, because it is a crisis. Uh, as you said, we're living at a moment where there's so much, uh, so many human rights crises around the world, it's not only in Syria, but in Iraq with ISIS. We have, uh, you know, a terrible situation that's going on in Burundi, the neighboring country of my own native country of Rwanda, in South Sudan. So we're living at a world where there's so many human rights, uh, human rights crises around the world. And Genocide Survivors Foundation and myself uh, uh, personally have been involved in raising awareness about what is going on, about the right way to react to this type of, of situation. As a genocide survivor, what is your take on the tension that we're seeing right now with uh, Islamic fundamentalism and the rise and threat of terrorism and the balance between that and refugees? Yeah. No, it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult problem, actually, because on one hand you have refugees who are legitimate refugees, who are fleeing from terrible violence, from discrimination, from having witnessed their own families, uh, mothers, fathers, children uh, being killed. But then you also have these extremist uh, groups like ISIS who are using this refugee crisis as a way to inf inf infiltrate into 
countries where the refugees are, are going. So with a situation such as, you know, that recently took place in Paris, with the Paris attack, I think a lot of people realize, yes, we need to, you know, respect the refugee rights, yes, we need to welcome the refugees, but there's also, uh, it's very important to screen. We can't have a blanket rule or statement saying, you know, we won't accept refugees from this particular region or from this particular uh, ethnicity or religion. That would not be, you know, especially in America, that would not be part of our principles and values. But at the same time, we do have a responsibility to protect our citizens and ourselves from uh, the infiltration. Uh, of these extremist groups who are trying to take advantage of the situation, who are in fact responsible for creating this uh, refugee uh, crisis. And for more on International Women's Day, check out our special web coverage for International Women's Day with a special focus on the United Nations initiative, Planet 5050 by 2030. Step it up for gender equality. That's all at cctv-america.com.